pace from a good point in the game before you asserted yourselves. How much of a challenge was that? And what does it say about this group to respond to the other team dictating terms? I mean, uh, we knew during scout that like they take the lead a lot, so we were prepared for it, and we just knew we gotta keep on going, keep playing the way we play, and good things will happen. Uh, it was really about just keeping composure, you know, and and not losing sight of what the main and the end goal was, you know, come out the game on top. But you know, we knew that it was gonna be some point where adversity was gonna hit, and I feel like uh, the first half it was definitely adversity with them having a the lead. So we just fought back, and sec well, second half we made it our our momentum to get out there and assert. Ball moved, the ball moved pretty well tonight. I don't know what the final numbers are, but you guys had an assist on, on each of your first 12 makes. What does that say about this group and, and now how you guys are pushing the ball and making sure everybody gets involved? I mean, Coach, uh, he puts a big emphasis on ball movement and moving the ball. And like, we track down like numbers and stuff, percentages. So when we move the ball and we get like third side, uh, get the ball to three sides, then uh, we shoot better percentage-wise. So that's something that we focus on. What did you guys talk about at halftime? There was a lot of three-point attempts in the first half, more than you guys normally would have in a half. Uh, did you guys talk about trying to get to the paint a little bit more second half? Yeah, coach was talking about like, we, sh we shot a lot. We were on pace to shoot like 40, I think. Yeah. Half. We shot like 19. So, yeah, he was like, you know, we got to keep playing our game and do what we do good well. So let's get to the paint. And then after, once the defense collapsed, then kick it out. You did seem like very comfortable with your three-point shots in the first half. And then you hit him again in the, in the second half. You had a key one right at the start of the second half. How did it feel? Uh, man, it just feels good. I mean, I've been dealing with a lot of inconsistency, consistency, so just trying to, you know, be consistent every day. But now it feels good to see them going, for sure. To get you down back, how, what does that mean for this, get, this group moving forward? Oh, we're a better team to be done, you know, and it's just – what it is, you know, and we love him. We love the fact that he's back, you know, and I feel like, you know, today with him coming back, he didn't want to just like jump in the mix and not get to, you know, jack the shots up. He kind of just let the game come to him, and I think he did a great job today. So it's, it's really good to have him back. Yeah. And Jeremiah had, you know, a key uh, a couple of baskets with that uh, less than four minutes to go. He gets a two off a rebound and gets you know, takes another clock off the board, and then. Uh, he gets a couple of free throws and it's a jumper for two. That's a pretty important segment by Jeremiah late in the game. Yeah, he definitely um he you know, we always we, we, we pour nothing but belief and confidence into our teammates. So, you know, the fact that he's confident enough to take that shot and, you know, get in there and get dirty with the big guys, you know, that's something that you know, we speak about and we we pour into the system over here. So, you know, he's just doing what he does normally. Yeah, we let him know that he's not just a regular freshman no more. Like, you know, he's played a lot more minutes than a lot of freshmen usually play. So uh, we, he just knows that he can take that step and be a, a, another leader for us. He's, he scored, but JB had seven assists as well. Tobin always talks about how the two of them play so well off of each other. How much more formidable, more dangerous does that make you when they're both on the same page like they were today? Um, you know, it's like a two-headed snake. You can come from either one, you know, and it's like one of them, it's kind of almost like they're always in sync. You know, one of them attacks the basket and one of them dishes the ball out. And if so, they'll just like reverse it. It's never like a, you know, and you nor normally don't see two point guards play really well together. So it's like, they're never stepping on each other's toes. They're just, they just make it work. It's like tango dancing. Guys, uh, in the first half, they shot the ball very well. In the second half, they didn't. Is that something you talked about in the locker room? And what was different in the second half? Uh, definitely how uh, we press. Just some of the traps uh, put us in a disadvantage and they had a bunch of open shots for their shooters. So just locating their shooters in the press and knowing who to contest to and who not to. And I forcing know. pressure. Yeah, ball and pressure. Ball handlers, you know. Making the passes harder. But they had a lot of easy passes going right. over the yeah. top. So yeah, yeah a lot of deflections and steals. They were very comfortable. Well, how's, how's, how important is that first three-point try that you have? Because if it goes in, you seem to string a bunch together. If it doesn't, you start off over, over three, over four. Yeah. Is it something that just gets in your head? Uh, uh, a little bit, but I don't think it should. I mean, regardless, I have belief to just keep on shooting like my coaches want me to shoot. Uh, coach even talked to me before about last game, like I didn't uh, get enough attempts up. So just being able to get open and take a, the open shot. So no, yeah. Definitely. Is there a number that you think you need to hit a certain amount of the game? Like, do you want to try five a game? Uh, you? I think, I like think. Seven or eight? At least like four, four to five helps us a lot as it gives them extra points, you know, gets pressure off of him for sure because they can't keep on uh, double teaming him and stuff. So, yeah, four or five would be good. We, we want them to shoot the ball, you know. We just tell them to shoot the ball. Like, 
there's no such thing as like a bad shot coming from a great shooter like Larry, you know? So, you know, like the goal is like when he hits one, we want to put him in rhythm, you know? We want to keep him in rhythm and keep feeding him the ball. And I think I think he put, put a string of shots, a great string of shots together today. And you know, we're going to keep on feeding him out. Regardless if he missed, over 10, 10, 10, we'll, we'll keep on giving him the ball. So you held him to 63 points. You know, it's kind of a goal to keep the score down in the low 60s. Uh, they shot 46%. But how do you feel your defense is coming along this season? I definitely think we're getting better, uh, especially half court. Obviously, our, our press defense has been what's uh, carrying us, obviously forcing turnovers and taking care of the ball. But uh, we just got to continue to get better half court, and it'll be a lot better for us. Greg, same question. How's it, how do you feel the defense is improving? Well, it's definitely improving. You know, it, it, it's improving for the better, and it's just more so focusing on, you know, starting off with the defense that we want to end the game with. You know, not, not, not so much as easing into it, because when we ease into it, we tend to let teams get really comfortable, and I feel like that's what happens in a lot of our games. And then we start feeling the pressure of losing the game, and we turn on the, we turn on the the work. So I feel like we have to start off by being aggressive with teams. Great. So, Sunday against St. Peter's, they had the upper hand the first time you guys played at their place last month. Is there a little bit of a revenge factor on you on Sunday? Yeah, definitely. You know, we we talk about games we've lost, and we, well, we really don't often talk about games we lost. You know, but we know that we've gave, we've given majority of our conference games away. We've given them away. But St. Peter's was a team that beat us. You know, it's a big difference, and I feel like that's like you know something we want to prove that that won't happen again. So, Greg, what did you practice on this week after the split up in Buffalo, Niagara? I actually wasn't. I I actually wasn't. Yeah. I actually I actually just got back yesterday. So I just got back yesterday. I had a family issue in um, oh, Chicago, okay. so I just got back yesterday. Yeah, practice is really just a lot of just cleaning some things up, uh, just learning from our mistakes in Buffalo. Obviously, uh, it was big, big about our pressure. We didn't give them any pressure at the beginning, so they were comfortable, like you said. So just being able to not make teams comfortable that was probably the biggest emphasis. I can tell you, practice was quiet though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot quieter with that for sure. Are you gaining confidence that you can play with anyone in the MAC conference? Oh yeah, no, we we felt that way from the beginning, but it's just now coming out and we're showing it. Yep, I mean, I feel like we can play with anybody. Uh, first, I go to Manhattan rivalry for you guys. Uh, thoughts on just participating in in Manhattan as an opponent? Uh, you know, well, I mean, I know it's a pretty big thing for the people who who love the the rivalry. You know, I just. Look at it as another game, but you know I definitely don't want to be on the losing end of it. So, you know I definitely wanted to come out and be like, all right, let's make sure we don't lose, and then to make it worse, we were on ESPNU. So it was like, let's definitely, definitely not lose. Nah, yeah, it was fun. Uh, you know, seeing all the gold shirts out there and just all the support we had. So, no, nah, rivalries are always uh, good games. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, all right, um, great win for us. You know, obviously. Um, it was a struggle. I mean, Manhattan, I think Manhattan does a great job uh, making it play their style, slowing the game down a little bit. Um, the first half, we didn't make a lot of shots, and we got into a grind, and uh, which played in their hands. The second half, we came out and had, had good focus. The first um, part of the second half, got ourselves a nice lead, and then played well down the stretch. So I think we shared the ball well. Um, did some good things. I thought our press was good in the second half. I mean, you, can't, you can't press unless you score. We just couldn't score the first half. I thought we got some pretty good shots. Um, a little tentative, I thought, the first half. So, I mean, we're not, you know, we're, we're, there's still a lot of room for us to grow offensively, especially, um, you know, Edan was out, Edan's back. Um, you know, it's, 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 we have to readjust a little bit there, too. Oz has been you know, up and down as far as his health, too. So, we, we just haven't been consistent enough um, offensively. So, but I'm, I'm happy with the win. Like, I mean, this time of year, any win, any win is good. Um, impressed by Manhattan, how hard they play, how together they play. Um, we knew it would be a struggle, but they played everybody close. So, we're happy to get the win and, and get ready for Sunday. Tobin, they dictated tempo in the first half. For your team to win the way it did and overcome that, what does it say about this team moving forward and how much they've progressed? It was good. It was good. Like, like, like part of that is like you know how my team is playing, how our teams play. We're trying to get them to understand that we're gonna we're gonna give some stuff up sometimes to to, to get the tempo faster. We're gonna make some mistakes. We're gonna have to. Um, um, give up some baskets with our pressure at times, but make them play play faster. I thought the first half were kind of like we're, we're tentative trying to trying to make plays, and so I thought the second half we played a little bit looser. They, they still scored a few, but we were a little bit better as far as like um, adjusting to uh, what they're trying to do. So you know, it's kind of funny when you, you know every every team we played already um, 
once and then sometimes twice. We hadn't played Manhattan, so it's good to see them and watch, you know, see my action. I thought the kid Winston was really good. I thought Torrey played well. They have good young guys, and um, they did a lot of good things the first half. They caused us problems. So um, we had to be adjusted and played well the second half. 21 assists on 25 makes. You had an assist on each of your first 12. What can you say about the ball movement tonight? Yeah, and, and, and we still don't move the ball like I want to. You know, it's, it's still frustrating at times. Like, it's like if you go through our possessions, we'll pass it and score, pass it and score, and then we'll come down the floor and do something we shouldn't do and then not score. And then it's like reminders and, and just understand. Like, and I, what you have is when you have a team now that, like, the two freshmen can score, um, Greg can score, Edan can score, Wes can score, they have to understand if they give the ball up, they'll get it back. So um, we do it. When we share the ball, we're a good offensive team. Um, and I think that's the, that's the key for us offensively. Just share the ball, just play unselfishly, and, and, and move. We didn't we didn't move great the first half, and I thought we moved better than the second half. So it was such a tale of two halves shooting percentage. Yep. They shot the ball so well in the first half. They didn't shoot the ball in the second half very well. And opposite of you guys, you didn't yep. shoot well in the first half, yep. and then you shot really well. Did you make some brilliant changes at a halftime? Yeah. The, there's nothing more overrated than the, the halftime adjustments. Right? We, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't change them. People in the real things are great. But there's no speech at halftime. There's no, hey, it was like, we, we had made some mistakes in the first half that we knew ahead of time what was coming, and we still screwed it up. And we were like, that was the one thing we were like, listen, let's, let's block back in what we're trying to do here. Um, didn't make as many mistakes defensively in the second half, which, which was good. So, no, there's, there was, uh, you know, and like sometimes – you know, and they got a couple of shots to start the second half. They just didn't make, and so sometimes you get a little lucky too. You know, but I thought we did a good job with the tempo. I mean, the tempo of the game was much more to our liking in the second half. You know, you talk about how JQ and JB play so well off each other. Joel had seven assists as well, even if he didn't score. Yeah, when they're both on the same page and clicking like they were tonight, how much more formidable does that make? Yeah, I mean they combined for fourteen assists, which is great. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean they just and they're and they're both like, you know, they're both pass first point guards. We almost wish JQ would be a little more aggressive. I thought he turned down some shots. Like he's more of a scorer than JB is. So they, but yeah, they, they mix well together. And like that's why we're trying to get Weza and Greg and Edan, um, Oz, Sully to understand if they move those guys, well, they'll get you. Sh- they'll get you shots. Let these guys get you shots. Sometimes we don't have the patience to do that. So um, when they say patience is a virtue, we don't have a, a lot of patience. About, you know, five minutes in, uh, left in the game. Uh, it's down to an eight-point lead. Uh, Greg gets it too, you have a timeout, and then you come out and Jeremiah scores six points for you, so you take back control of the game. How did that feel to uh, be able to manage that lead? It felt good, and obviously we, we, we know we've had trouble this year uh, managing leads, um, so it's good, good to, to, to do that. We're kind of going back and forth and playing small at times, playing bigger at times. You know, the reality is we need, we need more out of our big, big guys. You know, I, we, we talked to him today about that, Sultan and Oz got to give us more. Um, that's one thing where we have to get better at, especially as we move forward here, I mean, there's, we can't always go small. So we went small tonight. We can't always do that, but we, we need more out of Oz and Sultan. Um, you know, whether it's rebounding defensively, um, offensive rebounding, offensive uh, be, being active, we need more out of those two guys. You know, and, and obviously Terrell got hurt tonight, which, which, is, which is too bad. Because I, he, I thought he played well, too. So, you know. Okay. That, I mean, it's, a, it's like a hip flexor thing. So I doubt he'll play on Sunday. So, you know, he's had a lot of injuries. Right. He's a... Sometimes those guys who are muscle muscle bound get injured all the time. That's why I try to stay not muscle bound so that way I don't, I don't get hurt as much. But you yeah. did get it done back though. How, how much did that help you? Awesome, the team great, just just great. Like he just combs things down. And he knows how to play he's smart. You know, and I, think, I thought he looked good. You know, he's just mentally it's hard. You you, you sprain your ankle and you're worried. And he practiced for two days. He was kind of not sure if he's going to play. And then he came to me today and said, "I want to, I want to give it a go." And he, he looked he looked great to, great great to, to be like, one of those things. I don't know what he did tonight. But just had him out there like he, he played 22 minutes. Like those are big 22 minutes. Like an older guy who knows how to play. I mean, he what well, he won't be himself probably for another, you know, hopefully you know next weekend or the weekend after. To, to, but he but he but give us 22 great minutes, three for five from three, um, three turnovers. I mean that so that some of that's like you can just take a step slow. I mean there's a loose ball he didn't get. Like he'll get that back eventually. So but it was great to have him back. No, it was it was very very good. So the one stat that kind of jumped out at me was. I haven't seen this in a while. Most games, you outscore the other team in the paint, but you didn't tonight. We shot a lot of threes, right? Like in the first half, we, we actually, that's one thing at halftime we told me. I think we took 19 threes the first half, took 12 twos. We kind of addressed that at halftime. Like, that's not who we are, right. you know? Like, Wes is going to shoot threes. Um, he's the one guy who's going to shoot, you know, any three he gets, he shoots. Everybody else got to kind of play off the paint touches and stuff. So I thought we, sh- I thought we settled for some jumpers. Like, they wanted us to shoot threes. 
And it's the old thing of like, well, I'm, I'm open. Well, there's a reason. Sometimes there's a reason you're open, right? So it's like we have to learn to not, to keep moving, pass up maybe what's not a great three and get a better three, you know? But I thought we, we also missed like, you know, Bates had a couple good threes, didn't, didn't go in, which will go in later, later on. Terrell had a couple good threes. But we had some shots. We just didn't knock down. But um, yeah, we'd like to get more of the paint if we can. Paint, paint touches are the key to offense. I mean, every, you know, every coach in the world knows that. If you get the ball to paint, good things happen. we got to keep on grinding to do that. Coach, I just think Greg Gordon, I was watching him play defense on Robinson, they're big. He seems uh, like he can use his size effectively. How do you feel his defense is? <laughs> Depends on the possession. Sometimes I think it's great. Sometimes I'm like, what the hell is he doing, right? I mean, I, he's got all the physical tools. He's competitive as heck. He's just trying to learn how to, you know, there's two parts of defense, right? There's individual defense, one-on-one, -on -one, um, guard the ball, playing post defense, that kind of thing, which I think he's pretty good at. And there's a team part where you also have to be able to help, guard ball screens, guard the post, things like that. That's the part he has to get better at. He gave a three in the first half on a, on a screen where we covered in, 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 you know, in practice and shoot around. So he's got to get better at the team part. But, no, he's, he has all the tools to be a great defender. And, he's, you know, at the front of the press, when he's in the front of the press bringing energy and he's active, makes our press a hell of a lot better. So I thought, I thought the second half, he, first half he didn't, you know. Sometimes guys who are scoring would like to conserve their energy for offense. We got to get past that a little bit. We have to, you have to be able to play hard on defense and then, you know, rest on offense sometimes. Some guys, our guys don't necessarily want to rest on offense, they want to rest on defense. So we're, we're working on that. No, but I was watch, you know, watch Sully every game and he's getting maybe better at playing, playing down low and getting rebounds, but he still has trouble scoring yep. around the net. Is that something player development you're going to work on and something you can fix? We're, we've been all, and we've, our coaches have worked with him hard. He's working, man. Sully's, Sully's working. You know, it's, it's all different, higher level, you know, it's the bigger guys. So he's working every day on finishing every, I mean, Kyle Washington and Tom Bonican. I mean, they got pads out there hitting and they're, they're all that kind of stuff. So he's making progress. It's not showing up in the games, but he is getting better. He is getting better finishing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Like I think when he started the year, he started, now he's going off the bench. It's a different role. Um, but either way, he's, he's got to finish. It's definitely, it's definitely a major issue, but player development will, will definitely take care of that. And he'll get better. He's off balance sometimes. Um, but he's he's I mean he's so he's working his tail off. He wants to be good. I love the kid. Like he he wants to he wants to to be a great player. He he's he's there early. He stays late. He does all the extra stuff. He's just a matter of time. Eventually he'll be a guy who's going instead of going zero for four. He's three for four. It'll it'll come. You know, I wish it would come sooner, but it'll, it'll come. Coach, one of the things that you've been dealing with all season is the hot weza and the cold weza. <laughs> that first one goes in, you know, like three more are coming. That first one he misses, you know, like three more of those are coming. What's going through your mind when you're when you're watching him struggle versus when you're watching him rein him in? I was watching Caitlin Clark last night, right? I watched I'm watching her play because I'm, I'm an Iowa, I'm an Iowa guy, and, and um, I mean I watch her no matter what because she's just fun to watch, you know. And she's got like that unbelievable swagger to like she's gonna make every shot, right? Sometimes Wes, I wish he had a little more of that swagger, like because there's there's a, I mean he's a great shooter, he's got to shoot it, right? It's like and it's like sometimes he worries or he, sometimes he's he's like you said, makes his first one he feels great, but it's the first one. There's he's still a great shooter. It's like you got to have a um, um, you know, just a forward thinking mentality of like, okay, I missed that one, make the next one, you know? And I think he gets, he's, streak, he's very streaky, as you know, right? And like, just shoot the damn thing. And if you miss him, you miss him, we'll make the next one. You know, he can't be hesitant, he can't be tentative. But like, yeah, you got to go in tonight. I mean, like, then he's, he's a great shooter, great shooter. He just hasn't been consistent enough. And I think part of that's mentally, that's what he does for us. He's got to just keep on shooting the ball. You know, we, we talked about it. I have a Caitlin Clark mentality. I mean, she's pulling up from like 40 feet last night. Can you find a boy out in Iowa? I mean, like I've, like Clark? I've been trying so hard my whole career. I mean, I've been, I've been coaching for 25 years. I've tried to recruit Iowa. I've not, never had an Iowa kid. <laughs> and I'm, my brother's out there. He's been trying to help me. We've been trying to recruit. The, I can't, I've not gotten an Iowa kid. I've recruited kids from all over the getting world. I mean, the whole, the whole, and I cannot get an Iowa kid. Um, so hopefully at some point we'll get, right. we'll get that done. You know, I'll keep working on it.